This is the basics. I know a lot of you are saying, ah, oh, no. Tell me he's going to discuss basics. That's the part of the book I always skip. Right? <laughs> you see that ball? Or you see those uh, nine values? You go, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Let's go to the next chapter. Right. But this is the foundation of wall painting. Here we have six values, six basic values. We have the light value, we have the medium value, we have the dark value, we got the cast shadows, reflective light, right? And the highlight. If you start your painting that way, right, you'll have a successful painting. If you start your painting doing eyes and noses and mouths and everything else, then you may find yourself in trouble. And I hear it all the time. I hear people say, ah, oh, I've lost it. You didn't lose it. You forgot the basics. Average mm -hmm. skin tone. Right. What colors are you using? I'm using a cool, a cool yellow and a warm red. If I'm doing someone who has a very light complexion, I reverse it. I, I use a cool, cool red and a warm yellow. All right. So here we go. You put down your basic color first. And it doesn't matter how you put it down, so long as you put it down. And the whole thing is to keep that, that brush going until you've run out of paint and then come back. At this stage, I like to put a blush in of uh, warm red <coughs> on the light side. And I like to put a cool red <coughs> on the dark side. Uh, the hair, when you do hair, uh, try to make it as simple as possible because your main subject is this. Not the hair, not the hat, not the neck. This is your main subject. This main subject has to have your most intense colors, the most beautiful colors, right? And you don't want anything else to distract your main subject, right? So whether you're doing landscapes, in a landscape you select a, um, a point of interest or the reason you're painting it. Because that's what people want to see. What did you see when you were out there? What struck your eye? All right? And that moment and that point that you saw is what you want to paint. Everything else is diffused. You want to bring out that point of interest with your best colors, right? Your lightest lights, as if you were putting on a... Um, a spotlight on it, and it doesn't matter whether it's far away or, or, or near, right? You're the director, right? It's like being on a stage. In the stage you see a lot of people, right? But there's only one spotlight, and that's the person who sings. The fat lady sings, the spotlight is on her, right? Everything else is diffused, and this is the same way that you approach whether you're doing landscapes or anything else, all right? Because that's what people want to see from you. 
That's what you've got to deliver. Right? Not a lot of details, not a lot of trees. Right? What is it that struck your eye? Now when you're doing cast shadows, or you're doing any shadow, right? the most intense part of your um, mid value is going to be next to that shadow. So when you're going to start the, the, um, oh, it's confusing doing two things at the same time. <laughs> huh? When you start your, your cast shadow, right, I usually like to start, right, with my red coming across like this, right, on the edge of that cast shadow. opposite side, where the brim of the hat is, is going to be your darkest color, right? Because dark colors come forward, and you want that to be the darkest part of this subject. So what I do is I stop putting this in like that. Come in and I bring it down yeah. into that color. Right. And there's my cast shadow. And now the part on the forehead was dry, is it? Have you had it, right? Huh? The part that you just covered with the blue was dry. Right. right. Later on I may have to come back and make it darker because I want that be the darkest part because the brim of that hat is what's sticking out, mm -hmm. right? And this whole idea of painting in these basic values is to create an image of three dimension. Which red it is, it's not important. No, I know, but I'm not sure. you're dealing sure. with cools, cools and, and Right? And warms. Uh, I don't want the lips to be that obvious. Break up, I have to break up my edges. Right? So it doesn't look like if it's been pasted on. Hey, one of the things you don't want to do is that when you do any features, right? Don't put them in so tight that it looks like if you pasted it on there. Mm -hmm. Or it looks like when you were in third grade or fifth grade and you used to paint those lips that were real red, <laughs> right? Or that thing that you used to buy, that wax thing, <laughs> that big lips, right? <laughs> Putting your mouth, right? You want to avoid that. This is called control spontaneity. <laughs> right? I want to make my art look a little arty. I throw in a couple of splashes. Not with this one though. <laughs> right? Because what the heck? You're creating a painting. You're not creating a photograph. Right? And the thing is to make it exciting, and if it needs a couple of splashes here and there, by all means, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And people will say, oh, how spontaneous. <laughs> Intuitive. <laughs> it's controlled spontaneity. The problem is that you have to know how to do it. <laughs> And in watercolor, it's really the control of water. You could ruin a picture trying to be too spontaneous. 